All right, well, uh, let's go over the trades from today. SINT, currently up 72% on news. Uh, this was, it was on the gap scan, uh, but it wasn't actually a huge gap, or it was only gapping up like 13%. So uh, I, I didn't really have super, super high expectations for it. It had a algo spike right at 9 a.m., top of the hour, which was when breaking news came out. So we can... Uh, Actually, I already have this open here. No, it's the... Um, so the news here that came out was at 9 a.m. SINT awarded phase one contract from the Missile Defense Agency. Blah, 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 blah. Contract for 150 grand. All right, listen, 150 grand. I mean, that's like that's like the price of a Mercedes G-Wagon. I mean, that's, that's not really a lot of money. All right. Um, so, you know, but again, it's a, it is news. Uh, so the stock ends up squeezing up. And it goes immediately, uh, you know, at 9 a.m. from, uh, well, about low of $7 up to uh, about 9.72, which is a pretty good move. And then it, as we got closer to the open, it was below VWAP. It was it was clearly sort of fading. It wasn't holding up very well. Uh, so I, I didn't really think much of it. At the open, it pops up and I was like, I'm not going to get caught in a rejection off VWAP. I don't like that. And then it came back up right here. And this reminded me of that trade on AMAM. So, you know, I think it's important to recognize that patterns um, do repeat themselves in the market. So let's look at AMAM on another uh, chart here for a second. So AMAM, this was, um, it's like two weeks ago. All right, so we'll go back. Uh, it was the day it made the big move, so there we go. All right, so it was this day here. Uh, so sort of similarly at the open, it did pop up, and actually it was it was a little cleaner at the open than SINT, uh, but it sold off, and then right here, boom, into a halt. You know that's a that's a setup that can definitely excuse me can definitely trap short sellers as the stock suddenly has this surge of strength and halts up. So anyone who is shorting in this area. Uh, for that breakdown ends up being trapped as it's halted up. And there's when it, when you get caught in the halt, there's no time when it's that fast to unwind the position. You're suddenly, all of a sudden, you blink, you look to get drink, and then you look back, and it's halted up. And now it resumes and it halts up a second time as short sellers are trying to cover and long bias momentum traders are jumping in to ride uh, ride that wave. All right, so so that's um, AMAM. So, th so this morning when I saw this, what basically happened, and we can look at the 10 second chart, it happened happened really quick, quickly. Um, so let's see. Um, so we're looking at, we're going to jump forward to about 930. So right here at the open, it pops up to $9. And I was like, no, I'm not going to fall into that trap. It hits that nine and rejects and, and goes uh, red versus the open. And then right here in one 10 second candle, it's pinned up. It's just an immediately popped up and it's $9 on the ask. And when I saw that, I was like, okay, I like it. And immediately I pressed the buy button with my hotkey. Now the downside with that trade was that I thought I was going to get filled at $9 even because I saw nine on the ask, but I filled at $9 and 16 cents, which means I got 16 cents of slippage and I only got a partial fill of 1,100 shares of a 2,000 share order. So it, it took off without me. So what I ended up doing um, on that particular one was I took my profit at 9.45 and it ends up halting up at 9.58. And I'm holding just small size into the halt up. It resumes and as it resumes, let's see, I'll just adjust this for you. So it resumes and it dips down here on this candle to like 962 and it comes back up. I added 2,000 shares at 1077, goes to 1125 and I take the profit as it halts up. Then it goes into another halt here, goes into another halt, uh, opens higher and we get another dip here and it just keeps going higher. So I actually traded it. I just kept trading it as it went higher. Um, Pulls back a little bit. I got a trade uh, for the breakthrough 1350. 
And then this is actually where I gave back about half my profit. Uh, it was right in here. I added for the breakthrough uh, 1420 and then it drops here to 1350. So I'm down 50 cents a share. I cut the loss, keeping it tight stop. It comes back up. I got back in. It drops again. I stopped out again. And then I was like, that's it. I, I, I was up 3000 on the day. Now I'm up only 1800. Uh, I don't want to give back any more profit. I'm just going to be grateful for that. Uh, definitely traded with smaller size today. You know, and the thing is, We've been in a market where we've seen some kind of crazy action in the last few weeks. I've tried to be uh, a little bit cautious because it wouldn't be hard to make some big mistakes. So trying to manage risk, leaving money on the table, but walking away with a little bit of profit in my pocket each day. And, you know, ultimately, uh, sort of that's that's the basic goal of day trading is to try to capitalize on some of the volatility and to make money and, and to not overstay my welcome. It's very easy in this market to overstay your welcome and to go from green on the day to red. So if you get green, that might be the time just to walk away before you go red. And if you start going red, that might be the time to walk away before you go further red. And if you give back half your profit, that might also be a time to walk away. You have to make these decisions for yourself. Certainly uh, today you could say, well, geez, I, I could have bought off of VWAP here and, um, you know, well, I guess I'd be I could have been up a dollar a share. Yeah, yeah, but it also could have flushed and halted down and then I'm back to red on the day or, you know, or something like that. So I am just in a, in a mindset right now of trying to manage my risk. I don't have the, um, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of on a slow sort of, you know, it's the ebb and the flow of trading, but I'm on a little bit of a slow stretch here. We've had a couple of days that have been really good. We had, of course, COSM and you know, a couple of these others, but even those I left a lot on the table on. So uh, I'm always happy to see traders who are trading and excelling and crushing it, even when I'm going slow, because it just goes to show that you guys have learned how to capitalize on momentum. You've got your own risk parameters and you're willing to step up when you see really good opportunities. So I love that. That's awesome. And, and some of you guys today certainly uh, did far better than me, which is great, even on a similar entry, because I took my profit too soon. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, you know, green is good. I'm, I'm happy for those that do well, for those that struggle. You know, it comes back to thinking about, okay, where's my initial entry? Was it too high? Was I managing risk? Was I giving into FOMO? Uh, and, um, you know, and or did I have profit? And then I gave it back. All right. So one of the things that we've talked about with being a break-even trader is that most break-even traders, you know, in total, they've made a lot of money. But in total, they've also given back that same amount. So it shows that on the one hand, you do know how to make money. But on the other hand, you're not very good at keeping it in your pocket. So how can you get better at keeping that profit in your pocket? That's the question. Uh, there's a lot of different approaches for it. But uh, certainly developing some awareness around that tendency, if you have it, is, is important. That's the first step. All right, good luck for those that uh, keep trading SINT. I hope it goes higher, um, but I'm going to be grateful to be green today. Another day of trading the markets and making a little bit of money is a good day for me. So uh, that'll be my uh, recap for you guys. A reminder, as always, my results are not typical, and there's no guarantee you'll find success whether you trade on your own, you'll learn from me. And don't try to blindly follow me or anyone else. Practice in a simulator before you put real money on the line. And I'll see you guys back at it tomorrow morning.